Well, welcome to our worship on the web for May 3rd. This is the fourth Sunday of the Easter season. And uh, among other things, today is Monica's birthday. I think it's a few other people's birthday. And of course, I've misplaced my birthday list. Um, so we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And we begin with the traditional Easter greeting, Alleluia, Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed. So let's say that together, Alleluia, Christ is risen. Let us pray. O God, our shepherd, you know your sheep by name and lead us to safety through the valleys of death. Guide us by your voice that we may walk in certainty and security to the joyous feast prepared in your house. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross the emblem of suffering and shame And I love that old cross Where the dearest and best For a world of lost sinners was slain So I'll cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophy at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday for a crown To the old rugged cross I will ever be true its shame and reproach gladly bear Then he'll call me someday To my home far away Where his glory forever I'll share So I'll cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday for a crown So I'll cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday for a crown I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. And now it's time for a children's story. This is Jesus is God's son. Down to the river, the people came. It wasn't a picnic. It wasn't a game. The people came to confess their sin. Then John the Baptist said, come on in. This is a way to show you repent. So into the water, the people went. A man walked up to the riverside and stepped into the flowing tide. 
John the Baptist was quite surprised when he looked and saw those gentle eyes. Jesus, he cried, why did you come? You've never sinned against anyone. But Jesus replied, God's will be done. So Jesus was baptized that very day to show everyone he would follow God's way. Then a voice that came from heaven above said, this is my son, the one whom I love. And the spirit of God came down like a dove. That was when Jesus began to preach. The people loved to hear him teach. They gathered around in every town and listened until the sun went down. Jesus welcomed all who came. He healed the sick, the blind, the lame. The things he did showed everyone that Jesus really was God's son. The end. Okay, ready? Here you mm -hmm. go. Love, I love, I love the Lord forever. Love, I love, I love the Lord forever. I'll do my best, I'll do my best, oh, I'll do my best for you, oh, oh, oh. I'll do my best, I'll do my best, oh, I'll do my best for you. Trust. Trust. Sending you lots of love from Mexico. I hope you're all staying safe during this pandemic and following social distancing guidelines. I'm sheltering in place in the Mexican state of Jalisco, and the governor here has issued guidelines similar to those being implemented in Michigan and around the world. This pandemic has highlighted the interconnectedness of our global community and our need to listen to familiar voices of understanding and reason in order to safely pass through these times. Nosotros estamos en esto juntas, vaya con Dios. We're in this together. Go with God. A reading from the Gospel of John, the 10th chapter. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are the thieves and bandits. 
but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved, and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The word of the Lord. This is the fourth Sunday in the Easter season, a Sunday sometimes called Good Shepherd Sunday, because every year on the fourth Sunday of Easter, we read a passage from the 10th chapter of John, the parable of the Good Shepherd. We also read from Psalm 23, that psalm that has been such a comfort at so many funerals. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And the one that starts out, the Lord is my shepherd. But actually, my favorite part of that psalm is not the shepherd or the valley. It's the table. You prepare a table for me in the presence of mine enemies. Or as one translation says, in the presence of those who trouble me. A table. Because when people have to sit down at table, eat together, they can rarely remain enemies. Or as somebody says, if you sit down and pick up a fork, you have to put down your sword. There's a story told about someone who went to the Middle East and saw a real shepherd and a real shepherd fold and discovered that it was mounded up earth on three sides of a square with the mounds covered in thorns and thickets in order to keep out thief and wolf. But on the fourth side, there were two little short mounds and then a wide six feet wide opening. And the man said, well, I understand that that's how the sheep enter into the sheepfold, but it's so big, what keeps them from just wandering right back out again? And the shepherd said, oh, that's where I sleep. I am the door for the sheep. And when I lay down, I lay down my life for the sheep. And that's when our Middle East traveler understood what Jesus meant when he said, I am the door for the sheep. Sheep are not the most popular image for Christians. In fact, it's never really been one of my favorites. I don't think Christians are called to act like sheep if we understand sheep to be those who follow unthinkingly and those who uh, wander around with no sense of, of where they are going. You, you are not called to be sheep. On the other hand, sheep gather. I tried to get somebody to play box sheep may safely graze and pasture, and you'll find out maybe later on in this video whether or not I was successful in getting anyone to play that. In 1713, Bach wrote those words, or wrote that music to accompany um, the words. In English translation, they go like this. Sheep may safely graze and pasture in a watchful shepherd's sight. Those who rule with wisdom bring to hearts a peace abiding and bless the land with joy made bright. Well, right now, sheep may not safely gather. And as a result, I'm hearing more people talk about the loneliness that they're experiencing because we cannot gather. Loneliness can lead to depression, physical illness, domestic violence, child abuse. Frustrations mount, and yet still refugees and those who are imprisoned and those who are in need of foster care still look for a safe place where they can graze and pasture. Contentiousness was bad enough before all of this, and now it's on the increase. I hear people yell, don't be a sheep. But look, sheep do what they do because they hear a voice that they've come to trust. And trust is built up over a long period of time, even though it can be destroyed in a moment. There used to be a game show called Who Do You Trust?, and that is one of the questions that we're asking ourselves right now. So I'm wearing a mask when I go out. 
I'm wearing the mask not because I'm afraid of catching the virus from you, but we've learned that the mask is because I may unwittingly give the virus to you. And when I see that you are wearing the mask, I know that you are wearing that mask so that you do not unwittingly give it to me. In that way, a little bit of trust is restored and built back up. So now we're all looking for ways to combat the loneliness and also keep ourselves physically safe. It's time for us to make sure we get some exercise. It's time to revisit that old custom of sending cards and letters. I wonder if people are having Zoom dinners together with their friends and neighbors. I wonder if people are calling up their phone contacts, people they haven't seen or spoken to in a long time. And when you give generously to some cause that you care about, you know that you are a part of that, and you are a part of something that does good. And if you can't give money generously, then send a card or a letter to an organization that you care about and say, I really appreciate what you're doing and that you're putting yourself out there. But we also need to limit those things that sneak in and rob our sense of well-being. It's important for us to get good and accurate TV news, but it's also important for us to turn off the TV because we've had enough information for the day. Isolation is the right thing to do because of the virus, but we need the exact opposite in response to the loneliness epidemic. So before you go to bed tonight, take some of Bing Crosby's advice and count your blessings instead of sheep. That's what our time, the signs of God's grace at the end of worship has, has been about. Let yourself be filled today and tonight with a sense that not only is God with you, but God is leading us slowly, step by step, through the valleys of those things that trouble us. There will be a banquet on the other side. And when you eat dinner today, remember, that's a sign of the banquet. And before you eat, give thanks in a table grace. The more you give thanks, the more you give thanks for others, the more you find ways to give thanks with others, the more the presence of God will be with you. When you pick up a fork, you put down your sword, even the sword that is troubling and plaguing yourself. I want to end this with the prayer that Luther gave in his small catechism, the prayer for a time of evening. Luther said, in the evening when you go to bed, you are to make the sign of the Holy Cross and say, God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, watch over me. Amen. Then, kneeling or standing, say the Apostles' Creed and the Lord's Prayer. And if you wish, you may, in addition, recite this little prayer as well. I give you thanks, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously protected me today. I ask you to forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously to protect me tonight. Into your hands I commend myself, my body, my soul, and all that is mine. Let your holy angel be with me so that the wicked foe may have no power over me. Amen. And then he says, then you are to go to sleep quickly and cheerfully.
we pray together, I will end the petitions with the words, Lord, in your mercy, and have you respond together in your place. Hear our prayer. Let us pray. God, grant us the wisdom to keep ourselves physically safe in the face of this pandemic, but also give us the wisdom to keep ourselves emotionally healthy and spiritually healthy and to find ways to be in the company of others to promote our and everyone else's well-being. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. For those who are first responders and primary health care givers, we pray especially for Kevin and Kathy and Becky and all of those in our prayers um, who are working on behalf of others in the medical field. We pray for their emotional well-being in times of rest and release allow them to walk through this valley of the shadow of death and emerge on the other side whole and healthy. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. For students who are looking at graduations from high school and from college, for teachers who are finding ways to keep students involved and engaged, for store owners, that they find ways to recreate their businesses anew. For employees, that they will work in healthy and safe environments. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. For immigrants and refugees seeking to flee places of violence or lack of safety, for those who are imprisoned and cannot leave the places where they are, for the men and women of our armed forces, wherever they are deployed or stationed, that they find ways to be of support to one another and keep themselves safe as they work for the safety of others. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. For our church, that it find ways to be church with or without a building, with or without a place, but we know that we are rooted on behalf of others in this location. Keep us ever mindful of those whom we serve and allow us to bear one another's burdens in times of need. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. And now let us say together the words that our Savior taught us in the form of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And these words of the Apostles' Creed, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Look for the daily devotions that we're posting on our Lebanon Lutheran Church, parenthesis, ELCA, parenthesis, Facebook page. Um, our food pantry continues to be open on Wednesday mornings starting at 8.30. We'll have Zoom coffee hour at 11 o'clock this morning. If you'd like an invitation, just send me a text or an email. And we'll have Wednesday Bible study starting at 7 o'clock. And again, that's by Zoom. 
So if you'd like an invitation to the Zoom meeting, just uh, text me or send me an email and I will send you the link and the invitations. So that's it for now, except for these words from Genesis 31, 49. The Lord watch between me and thee while we are absent from one another. my mask today because I don't want to give you a computer virus. Can you tell I'm smiling? No?